when you say you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you are recognizing who you are and who he is. Who you're not and who he is, right? When you say you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you're recognizing yourself as a sinner and him as a savior. You're recognizing your need for him. You're recognizing that his way is better, that you want him to lead and you want to follow. I think 2,000 years ago, people would have heard this first part of the passage, whoever wants to be my disciple, and I feel like they'd been like, yes, sir, that kind of sounds dope. Jesus is kind of cool. Like, Jesus gets to travel a lot. Like, Jesus got all sorts of award points. <laughs> Jesus gets to, gets to speak in front of people. Like, crowds follow him. People know his name. People know his disciples' name. This dude walks on water. Come on, y'all. Like, this dude can make limbs grow back. This dude can make blind men see. This guy can change water into wine. That would be awesome to follow him. Listen, I, I think that a lot of people today, we love the idea of following Jesus. But he says, whoever wants to be my disciple, anybody can be, but then he says the next statement, must deny themselves. The word deny means to forget about, to renounce, to reject. So it's, it's, it's powerful in, in our English language, but uh, when Jesus would have originally spoke this, the, 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 the Greek, Greek would have said this, it, it, would, it would have been uh, deny means our neomahi, which means to disregard his own interest, to act entirely unlike himself. It's a total negation of self. It's important to note here, I was doing a lot of study on this passage, and a lot of scholars would say what Jesus was saying here, he was not saying deny yourself. He was saying deny yourself. You get that? He was not saying deny yourself of every good thing. That you can't enjoy this life. Can I tell you that God wants you to enjoy your life? That God wants you to be in community? That God wants you to, to, to have good things in this life? To have good relationships? That God wants to, to bless your career and bless the things in your life? That, that God wants you to live, laugh, love and post it up in your kitchen, okay? That, that God wants good things for your life. But listen, he was saying deny yourself. And self here is synonymous with flesh, which we read in Galatians, okay? So remember, flesh is bent towards our pride, the things that are sinful, the things that are self-gratifying, the things that stand in opposition to the spirit. He wasn't saying deny yourself. He was saying deny yourself. Do you know why it was probably difficult to hear 2,000 years ago, but maybe even more difficult to hear now in 2022? It's because we live in a world where you don't have to deny yourself of anything. You don't have to deny yourself of any kind of sexual experience. Like whatever you want, you can go find it, you can go get it, it's encouraged. You don't have to deny yourself of any kind of substances. In our world today, the gray area when it comes to substances and substance abuse is only getting stronger. You don't have to deny yourself of any kind of pleasures. You have to deny yourself of any kind of status. Anything you want. Anybody who you want to be, anybody that you want to try to impress, anything that you want in your life, you can figure out in our world today how to get that into your life. Every message that we hear in our world today is about self-fulfillment. Tell me you've heard these phrases before. It's your body, do with it what you want. It's your life, live it how you want. YOLO, do you, boo, and don't let anybody tell you that you can't, right? Like, we hear things like, be, be true to yourself, follow your truth, follow your heart. And, and I think it's why our culture loves the idea of following Jesus, but not the reality of following Jesus. Because following Jesus stands in opposition to everything that our culture is screaming. Our culture is saying, listen, whatever you want, take it as far as it will take you. You don't have to deny yourself of anything. And Jesus says, that's fine. You have free will. You can do with your life whatever you want to do. But if you want to be my disciple, you will deny yourself. Half the room loves that and half is like, eh. Hey, Jesus said it, not me, just for the record, all right? Why, why, why did Jesus use intense language? Like, why, why, why did it have to be this way? Why did Jesus say this? And I think that instead of trying to answer those questions in our mind, I think that we just have to remember that, that his ways are higher than our ways. That his thoughts are, are higher than, than our thoughts. That, 
He, he knows the span of the universe and, and the world. He knows your life. He, he knows evil like you and I don't know evil. He knows heaven and hell like you and I don't know heaven and hell. Like Jesus knows what's at stake. And so Jesus knows that your flesh will always lead you to places of destruction and death. But your spirit, the Holy Spirit, will always lead you to places of hope and life. Hear me saying yes to the spirit is denying your flesh. Saying yes to your flesh is denying the spirit. And what you'll actually see is yourself quenching it. Galatians 5.16 says, But I say, walk by the spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. So he says, whoever wants to be my disciple, invitation's open. Whoever wants it. If you're in this room today or listening online, I'm going to give you a chance to, to accept that invitation. And people are going to do it in this service. They did it in the last service. Come on. It's open to anybody, but must deny themselves and take up their cross daily. I imagine Jesus said this 2,000 years ago, and the other half of the crowd was like, oh, man, I don't know. Like, you had me at the first part. You had me at hello. But then you ask something of me, I'm like, I don't know, maybe I could because you're still pretty dope. But nah, now you're asking me this. See, the disciples didn't yet know what you and I know at this time. That right now, for us, the cross is a symbol of what? Salvation and love and forgiveness. But 2,000 years ago, the cross was a symbol of pain and suffering and death. Very different. So, so when Jesus would have said these words, everyone in their mind 2,000 years ago would have had a, a picture of what that would have meant. See, in the Roman world, before a man died on his cross, he first had to carry his cross. When the Romans crucified a criminal, before they hung the criminal on a cross, they first hung the cross on them, and they had to carry it to their place of crucifixion. People understood that carrying a cross always meant Death on a cross. If someone took up their cross, they never came back. It was a one-way journey. Can I tell you that when you say yes to Jesus, when you give your life to him, when you surrender yourself to him, that is a one-way journey to dying to self. To no turning back. That you're saying that from here on out, though I may stumble, though I may fail, though I may fall, though I may live my entire life for seasons of my life gratifying the desires of my flesh, to the best of my ability, I'm going to do this God's way. To the best of my ability, I'm going to live a life worthy of the calling that I've received. To the best of my ability, I'm going to be a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Jesus may deny yourself equal with Take up your cross. They're expressing the same idea because the cross wasn't about self-promotion or self-affirmation. It was about self-denial. And Jesus said, followers of me must take up their cross daily. 